Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for the beautiful introduction. And thank you, um, Dr. Korea, for uh, inviting me. Um, as I've already been introduced, that is the work that I'll be doing. I am sorry, my network is quite unstable. Uh, if it gets too unstable, I will request to, uh, to present without my, my, my um, video. But for, so far for now, it seems okay. Um, let's just go there. I don't know if my, my uh, presentation is, is showing that side. Yeah, it's showing, but I request you if you but can. It's not yeah, on the yeah, slide. Just yeah, slide yeah. Show. Perfectly fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the purpose really of this uh, keynote is for me to share the historic milestones that we, we, we've uh, been through in this journey in, the South Africa, in South Africa, in the development and advancement of forensic nursing in South Africa. And I will do this by focusing on what we've done in terms of our education and training, as well as in practice, specifically looking at the pragmatic approach that we used in advancing forensic nursing practice. And then of course, I will share the lessons uh, of our experiences. Uh, the historic milestones uh, starts exactly in um, 1998 when Virginia Lynch and 13 other nurse, uh, uh, forensic practitioners visited South Africa. The next one would be in, the, in 2003, which is legal definition, when, when we started having legal definition of uh, forensic nurses. And what is important about 2003 is that it's also the year that I was introduced to Virginia Lynch when I visited the States when I was studying at Johns Hopkins University. And then of course, I will talk about the birth of a South African Forensic Nursing Association, which was in 2013. And then where we are right now, I would be presenting around those milestones. So historically, uh, it, it will always in South Africa starts with Virginia, but of course she was working with uh, some of other American forensic practitioners from the US. But on our side, she was working with Dr. Trump else, who was a senior district surgeon at the time. That's the time when a forensic nursing was introduced in this country. Then they piloted a, a training of forensic nurses, starting with 24 forensic nurses who were trained in Kimberley, one of our major cities um, where diamond was first discovered and also 40 forensic nurses who were later trained in KZN, which is a province where I am. So at that point, somebody, um, one of the, of the journalists put this on, on the newspaper as, um, as, as what was the purpose of this training. However, we, when we looked at it, we realized that that, that was not, totally what, what we believe forensic nursing is, as you would have uh, seen how Virginia later on uh, was quoted by Batim saying that forensic nursing should provide, is, provides an exploration of forensic aspects of healthcare, including principles and, for, and philosophies of forensic science, forensic pathology, um, bioethics, victimology, traumatology, sexual and domestic violence, medical legal documentation and rules of evidence and, to and to toxicology, which was more in line with also what the American Academy of Forensic Science, uh, how they explained uh, or defined forensic nursing in 1991. So there was a little bit of a shortfall in how that particular um, journalist um, defined uh, uh, forensic nursing in South Africa. However, we were happy that it was already being uh, 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 written about even on, on, on newspapers. And this was one of the other newspapers uh, which, which uh, spoke about this being a first on the African continent and we're excited about seeing this also on the newspapers. 
And um, of course, I, 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 I can never present anything about forensic nursing in South Africa without presenting these two. Of course, they may look different right now, uh, but I'm glad that Virginia is here and she's smiling at me and she still looks the same. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this is um, Dr. Trump Els, whom we consider as father of forensic nursing in South Africa. And this is, of course, our dear mother of forensic nursing in South Africa, that is Virginia Lynch, who also happens to be a dear friend of mine. So this picture really is of the people who were trained in 1998, which I got on one of the archives because since I became aware of forensic nursing um, in, the late, in the early 2000s, I started following and digging anything that I could come up with, uh, especially after 2003 when I had met uh, Virginia Lynch in, when I was studying at Johns Hopkins School of Nursing. The ones that I've highlighted in red, of course, are the people that I've met and communicated with and engaged with through Virginia. Um, Yes, um, the, this guy was one of the first nurses that were trained in Kimberley by Virginia Lynch. I'm sure he, she won't recognize him now because of the next picture where he was nice and young and uh, looking differently. But be assured, Virginia, this is Mohao Makosane, one of your first students, and he has not left uh, forensic nursing. At the moment, he's serving as a director in, 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 in forensic, um, in, in, as a, he's currently serving as a director of clinical forensic uh, medical services in Gauteng, which is one of the provinces in this country. So um, in the next picture, maybe you'll we'll recognize him in this other picture because that's how you probably would have known him. Again, this is one of those old uh, magazines that, uh, and, or newspapers that I had to dig and find uh, just to come and indicate how far we've gone. That is the same man that I've just shown you uh, um, when he was now, this was in 1998, but the, the late, the, the earlier version was just last year. And this is the place where he started working uh, as a forensic nurse. Uh, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, um, one of the first uh, sexual assault response team clinics uh, in Kimberley, where um, under Dr. Uh, Trump Els uh, Mohau worked. And this is uh, another nurse who was trained, uh, the first nurse, forensic nurse who was trained in Deben in when uh, uh, Virginia and, and her colleagues were here, she, uh, she became, a, she's a nurse educator and a GBV activist. She has retired now, but she remains a very active member of the South African Forensic Nursing Association. And she's an, also an executive board member for the KwaZulu Natal Forensic Nurses Forum. She also happens to be a dear friend of mine because I'm trying to take a baton from all those people who have gone be before me. There were quite, after, after the training that uh, was introduced, pi piloted by um, Virginia and Dr. Uh, Trump else, a number of NGOs, that is the non-governmental organizations, as well as universities, started providing certificate training programs in forensic nursing in South Africa. One of those was the University of uh, Free State, the University of KwaZulu-Natal, and the University of Cape Town, where I was based, um, and the University of Pretoria. However, all the graduates from these programs were never formally recognized by the South African Nursing Council because uh, as part of the recognition by the South African Nursing Council, one has to be registered against an, a role or an act where, uh, which has been enacted to, to accept that uh, additional qualification. However, at this time, uh, all along, this has not been the case until later on in, 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 the, in the program. So later on, these, all these universities that have uh, the stars decided to discontinue the program 
so that while we were waiting to realign with what the South African Nursing Council was doing in the background. So um, as I indicated that uh, in 2003, we had a legal definition of uh, forensic nurse. First legal definition, it is on the National Health Act of 61 of 2003, under the regulations regarding rendering of clinical forensic medicine services, which was later amended in 2012. It defines forensic nurse as a professional who is registered with the South African Nursing Council, trained in forensic clinical medicine, who is authorized to examine, take forensic evidence for investigation and provide counseling and testing for the victim of sexual assault. Again, slightly limiting because it's only limiting it to, to victims of sexual assault. Limited as this legal definition was, it gave us courage to forge ahead and start the process of compelling the South African Nursing Council to recognize forensic nursing as an additional qualification. Because now we were saying we have an act that says this person has to be recognized by the South African Nursing Council. So you Nursing Council, you need to do something. And of course, the nurses who were trained in those uh, institutions were also knocking on South African Nursing Council's doors wanting to be recognized and wanting to be registered. So that is uh, in a way that really helped us because we could then go to the, to the nursing council with that. However, the nursing council advised us that they could not entertain individual people who were coming asking for registration or asking them to, 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 to recognize forensic nurses. So they advised us to develop an association or a voice which uh, could come as a group and uh, work with them in de the development of forensic nursing competencies. This we took into our stride and uh, we worked with them and we developed those um, uh, uh, competencies. We, this is just where I'm sharing how since um, 2013, after the, the, that advice from the Nursing Council, we developed the South African Forensic Nursing Association uh, which became the voice of, of forensic nurses, irrespective of what level of training they have received and wherever they've received it, uh, focusing on, on voicing out the issues, the needs of these nurses, but also um, preparing or providing training as well as some research to, to an extent. I, I like this because we also published this in the International Association of Forensic Nurses website. You, you, if, you, if, if you have time, you can get uh, to that and read more about uh, the birth of SAFNA uh, in, in South Africa. And of course, um, later on through working uh, 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 in close contact with the South African Nursing Council, we reached this milestone, which I consider as our, a, a pinnacle in the development and advancement of forensic nursing education and practice in South Africa, because finally we were now uh, recognized, oh, let me not say we, let me just say forensic nursing was finally being recognized by the South African Nursing Council, which is our national uh, um, professional regulatory body and through the work of South African Forensic Nursing Association, we developed these um, uh, uh, nursing competencies or nursing outcomes, uh, nursing education outcomes for a person who is being prepared in the postgraduate diploma, at the postgraduate diploma level. We call them exit level outcomes postgraduate diploma in nursing, in nursing. These can be uh, um, downloaded by any nursing education institution, be it a university, a college, public or private, which wants to develop uh, a curriculum in postgraduate diploma. They can, they have access to, to, to this through the South African Nursing Council website. So this for us was a pinnacle of, of our work. And of course, uh, we continued, we didn't just rest uh, from there. Um, 
since the people who were trained, they didn't just think that just because the South African Nursing Council was not recognizing the qualification, we didn't just sit on our laurels. We started developing nurse led, uh, forensic nurse led practice where we looked after the victims, mostly the victims of sexual assault, but also any other victim of, of uh, uh, violent crime. Dramatic response to a shortage of doctors to care for the victims um, of, of, of violent crime in the country. There was also at that time an increase in the crime statistics, especially increase in rape and gender-based violent crimes, which later led to us or the country being dubbed the rape capital of the world by Interpol. So there was a need for us to not just rest, but develop the nurse led practice, even if we were not um, recognized by, by the South African Nursing Council. This of course was done because of the assistance and the support from most of the forensic uh, specialists, the doctors, uh, starting from Dr. Trump else, uh, I've seen Dr. Steve is also in this, uh, Steve Knight is also in this um, conference, but also Dr. Um, Seginaidu and many others who really believed in the forensic nurses to be able to provide a quality nursing care to the victims of violent crime. And of course, it was also a, a, a pragmatic response to what the World Health Organization has, has done because the, at that point um, around the 2008, the World Health Organization had made a call to all the countries to adopt uh, what, what is known as task shifting which is a process of moving specific tasks where appropriate from highly qualified health workers, for instance, the district surgeons or the forensic specialists to health workers with fewer qualifications for more efficient use of the available human resources. For, at that point, they were only re regarding this for HIV and AIDS, but we also are aware of the intersection between HIV and AIDS. So for us, we just, piggyback on that call. And that is how we looked at task shifting uh, towards um, the provision of um, forensic nursing to our patients. And some of the principles that we really adopted was uh, coming from the, the World Health um, Organization uh, principles was moving from the highly qualified doctors in our case being the district surgeons or the clinical forensic medical doctors. At first, they allowed any other non-clinical medical doctor to, to do this. However, even those could not handle the, the, the increase in, in the victims of, of violent crimes and trauma. So the task shifting were moved, the tasks were moved to professional nurses, hence the the, the, the trained uh, forensic nurses coming to the fore. We also, this was made possible by adopting the principles of uh, task shifting, uh, regulating what was, was to happen, supervision. I've already spoken about how the doctors came to the fore and provided supervision to these nurses. Delegation, uh, mentoring, we are still up to now being mentored. Our nurses are still being mentored by some of the doctors and innovation because looking at a qualification that has been non-existing and then bringing it to a point where a professional a, a, a regulatory body accepts it, it, is, it takes innovation, but it also takes resilience on the part of those nurses as well as those people who are interested in helping them. Uh, we also made sure that as forensic nurses, we were, we were visible in many platforms. Uh, this, this picture looks like someone you, you may have already recognized. Uh, this must have been some 2015, 2016, where uh, she presented her work. That, that's me, by the way, uh, as a forensic nurse, but working for the university where we were talking about the first campus sexual assault response team that was looking at the victims and survivors of, of violent crimes in the universities. This was on one of the national uh, television stations. 
um, just making sure that we are visible. And we also have uh, advanced um, forensic nursing education and training by becoming visible in all spheres here and also developing scholars. Here, the, the guy that I've highlighted in red is one of my PhD students. He, he had to present with other people who are doctors mostly. And his work is in, he's looking at the medical, uh, medical issue. He's looking at clinical forensic nursing, particularly in the care of male victims, boys and men. So those are the things that we've just been trying to make sure that our voice, our faces, everything is known out there that forensic nurses are there in this country and they need to be utilized at all levels. He is doing PhD, so he can also be utilized at that at the at, at higher education level. So our lessons really has been that Developing uh, and advancing forensic nursing science and practice is a long and tedious journey, but it can be done. Uh, we've already seen how it was done in, in, in India, but we are just reinforcing that, that it can be done if we all care about the quality nursing care for the victims and survivors of violent crimes and traumatic accidents, if we care about the development of generations of forensic nurses and, scholar, and scholars globally. So as long as we have, we still have um, people like Virginia Lynch in our myths and in our countries, we can all stand up and be counted in the development and, av and advancement of forensic nursing science in our individual countries. Uh, as part of conclusion, I just want to quote this uh, adapted quotation from um, somewhere else, I think it's, uh, it's Isaac Newton, who said, uh, so I've adapted it. So I'm saying that if I, Sineku Budoma, have seen further than others in advancing forensic nursing practice in South Africa, it is because I've been standing upon the shoulders of these two giants. You two can do it. I thank you. <laughs>